Sometimes we don't want to find pressure at a specific point. We want to find out what the pressure is as a function of position. If we're looking at a whole surface, for example, we'd like to know what the pressure is everywhere on that surface as a function of position on that surface. So if we have elevation, h, which is height positive upwards, and we have some location 0, where the pressure is p naught at that location 0, and h at location 0 is some arbitrary value h naught at the origin, then we can write that the pressure at any other location is equal to the pressure at the origin plus density times gravity, assuming we're working always in the same continuous fluid, of h naught minus h1. So what that says is if h1 is higher than h naught, then I'm going to get a higher, a lower pressure because h1 will be bigger than h naught, so that'll be negative, and I'll wind up with p naught minus rho g times the elevation difference. Or if it's lower, then h1 will be smaller, that'll be a positive number, so that'll make up for my signs that I didn't worry about so much in the single point calculations. So let me check and make sure I've got that one right. If h1 is higher up here, then I'll get a lower pressure. If h1 is lower down here, then I'll get a higher pressure. So I'm going in the right direction. So important to note that that pressure is a function of the elevation alone because we're assuming that both gravity and density are constants within the fluid. That is, we're treating the fluid as incompressible, as having constant density. And our height, though, could be some complicated function of our spatial coordinate system. It could depend on x, y, and z if, for example, we had a coordinate system that wasn't oriented with the vertical. For example, if our coordinate system had z out of the page and had y and x oriented at some angle theta to the vertical, then we're not going to have h being simply y or x or z, although at least if z is a horizontal out of the page, it's not going to contribute at all. So in this case, the height h is a function of x and y together, and it's h naught plus, there's h naught, plus y times cos theta. So as we go up in h, or we go out in y, they're the same sign, so we've got positive, and the angle between them is theta, so if theta was zero, y and h would be aligned and we'd be going up, so we've got a cosine. And then the x-axis going out this way, if we go increasingly out in x along any line of constant y, we're going to be seeing h decreasing with increasing x. So we'll have negative x sine theta. So it's not a very complicated function of x and y. Theta is a constant because that just defines our orientation of our coordinate system relative to the vertical. And knowing the relationship between x, y, and h, we can then write the pressure. p naught plus rho g h naught minus h naught plus y cos theta minus x sine theta and that closes that one, that closes that one. Or, rearranging a little bit, p naught plus rho g. In this case, because h naught was right at the origin, we knew the h there and we set it equal to h naught. These two cancel out and we wind up with y cos theta minus x sine theta. So we can get our pressure in terms of our local coordinate system. And it's not a function of z, because z is horizontal. So let's think about how we might deal with this on a surface. If I had a vertical surface that was underwater 
and I was interested in finding out what the pressure was if I looked at it from from this direction I might have a surface like this I want to find out the pressure applied over this area the total effects of that pressure then I'd need to be able to tell what the pressure was anywhere on that particular area and so I need to figure out pressure as a function of location coordinates on that area well one of the ways I can make my life simpler is to observe that it really only depends on the distance under the water so to make my life easier this vertical wall coordinate I'm gonna call that Y so now I've got this dimension here through my surface that's Y and I've got an X dimension perpendicular to Y that'll be my X dimension because I've arranged it so that Y is vertical the pressure is going to be a function of Y only so P is P of H alone and because of my chosen coordinate system H is a function of Y alone so H is just some function of Y so where do we know what the pressure is well we know that this is atmosphere above the surface of the water where P is equal to P naught at atmosphere so let's make that H equal to zero because that's going to be easy if that's H equal to zero then we can get the relationship between Y H and L Y is going to be H plus L right because starting down here at the bottom by the time we get up to here y is equal to l h is equal to zero so y is equal to h plus l so our pressure will be p naught plus rho g times h naught minus h that'll be equal to p naught plus rho g times zero because h zero is zero minus h which is y minus l right if y is equal to h plus l then h is equal to y minus l or p is equal to p naught plus rho g l minus y so now we have that pressure as a function of our y dimension and it's actually the pressure is going down as y goes up that makes sense it's got a rho g times y in it and that makes sense because h and y are changing together it's got an offset of l in it and that makes sense because the origin y is l below the surface there so let's test it at y equals l we're up at the surface here and p equals p naught plus rho g times l minus l so p is equal to p naught so it checks out here and let's go down to the bottom here where we're under the water we're l down below the water y is equal to zero so p is equal to p naught plus rho g times l that's the l so it gives us the right answer at the surface it gives us the right answer a distance L below the surface and in between it varies linearly increasing from zero at the surface up to rho g times L down at the bottom there so we wind up with a pressure variation that goes linearly like this and in the region that we're interested in here's our pressure forces increasing as we go deeper and deeper under the water and the pressure increases linearly with the distance we go below the water and we've got our geometry sorted out this is an important skill to have when you're trying to solve problems about pressures distributed over larger areas because if you want to figure out the effects of the pressure forces acting on this surface over here you're going to have to be able to integrate over this entire range of pressures and for that you're going to need to know the pressure as a function of position so the big thing is you need to be able to do some analytical geometry to transform coordinate systems now supposedly that's something that you're already pretty good at 
but very often second year students need a bit of a reminder to how to take this skill to practical applications like finding the pressure. So check yourself, make sure that this works out to be something that is physically making sense. The pressure is increasing linearly as we go down under the water. It gets to a maximum there that matches what we get if we calculate at that point. It gets to zero there, which is what we'd get if we calculate at that point. So we've got two checkpoints, making sure that things are right, and we know that it should be linearly increasing. So that gives us some confidence in this algebraic expression that we got from our analytical geometry transforming our coordinates to move into a practical application. The big advantage we got, we defined our coordinate system so that it was well oriented with the vertical elevation. That's not always a luxury that we'll have.